Hi Nigel here with the drive wire and this is the 2022 Bolt EUV from Chevy and we haven't been able to get a hold of one of these because Chevy halted production last year and recalled all the cars due to a battery problem. The problem was they were catching fire while they were being charged, which is never a good thing. So they've subsequently fixed it, even has a sticker on here that says certified battery update, so we should be good to go. I've charged it a few times and it hasn't caught fire since then, which is good. Anyway, I was an early adopter of EVs. I used to have a Chevy Spark EV, great little car, tinier than this, lighter than this, front motor, front wheel drive, 140 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque. My life was wheel spin in that car and it put a stupid grin on my face. Downside was it only really had about 80 miles of range if you were careful and 60 to 50 if you weren't. Anyway, today I'm going to review this new 2022 Bolt EUV. It's back in business. It's up against some stiff competition. Let's see exactly how it does. So the Bolt EUV is essentially a taller, funkier, and more assertively styled version of the Bolt EV. Mechanicals are identical, but it's 6.3 inches longer, and it has an extra 2.9 inches between these 17 inch alloys that it's wearing with these Michelin Eco tires. And then at the front, it has this body colored insert right here in place of obviously a radiator grill, like the black bow tie, super sleek, futuristic looking LED lights here at the front. I do like the way the face looks, some nice looking lights at the side as well, a little bit of a grill here. Overall, I think it looks really good from the front. Not quite as cohesive at the back. I'm not really keen on this sort of matte black feature here. And the uh, load height's quite high um, to get items into the trunk. It's also got this lot of piano black, which I also don't like, but I do like these lights, this treatment right here for these lights. And then I really do like this rear spoiler at the back. It gives it a little bit more of an aggressive look. And then inside the trunk, so in the back, you've got a decent amount of space, about 16.3 cubic feet of space. And you also get this additional space under here as well. And then if you put the seats down, you get about 56 cubic feet, which is quite a lot for a car like this. The other thing is you get this uh, quite thin and very lightweight uh, luggage cover, a bit like a shower curtain. Uh, got to keep the weight down on EVs since the batteries weigh so much. So I understand why they did it, but it does just doesn't, it feels a little janky. So this premium model starts at $37,500. It's got a couple of options checked. It comes with the sun and sound package that obviously includes the sound system, which is Bose, and then a sunroof, sunshade, and also navigation. I wouldn't need that. I wouldn't take it. The other option is it has Chevy's excellent Super Cruise system. That's $2,650. The sun and sound package is $2,450. That puts the total price out to be about $41,000, including destination. But there is some good news. This one, you can still get the $7,500 tax credit. Next year, that goes away. So Chevy's actually discounting this car by $6,000 next year, which makes it one of the cheapest EVs you can buy. Probably the cheapest EV you can buy, except for the Bolt EV that has a range of more than 200 miles. Yes, uh, the Nissan Leaf is probably cheaper, but it has terrible range. But this one has a range of 247 miles. So it's not all good news. This will fast charge. Here's the little fast charger thing. Uh, but when you hook it up to a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger, the Bolt's charging rate maxes out at around 53. So when you go from 10 to 90%, takes about an hour and 24 minutes. So compare that with the Volkswagen ID4, that charges at 125 kilowatt hours, and it'll hit 90% in 45 minutes. So you gotta take that into consideration, and will this be a decent car for road trips or not? Because that's a lot of coffees in an hour and a half. So what's under the hood? Well, it's a single permanent magnet motor. It's got 200 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. Obviously, it's a single speed transmission. Zero to 60 takes around 6.8 seconds, but it does spin its wheels. So I kind of wish that it had rear wheel drive. So weirdly, the Bolt EUV and the EV have exactly the same cargo space in the back. Bit weird, but 
If you were paying attention earlier when I said that it had put another 2.9 inches into the wheelbase, this is where you get the additional space for passengers, not luggage. So there is quite a lot of room in here. You do sit sort of up a little bit and there's not a whole lot of headroom, but you do get heated seats. Not very good right now, so it's like 85 degrees outside. And then two, one fast and one slow charger. You get a little pair of cup holders and an armrest, and generally the materials quality is good. This one comes with the leather seating option because it's a, a premium trim. Uh, not, a, not a bad place to spend at least a little bit of time in the back. Inside at the front, pretty comfortable. These seats are on the firm side. Again, leather faced. Uh, most of the materials inside are of a pretty decent quality on the dash, leather covered steering wheel, uh, decently comfortable. This one's got electric power, on the driver's side, including a lumbar support. And then on the back, <sighs> So here we are in the front and things are pretty good actually. These seats are really nice, leather faced as I mentioned earlier and materials are generally a pretty good quality. There's some scratchy plastics here but the majority of them are actually really nice, got a soft feel leather covered steering wheel. The driver's seat is all electric so front and back, up and down and uh, lumbar support. The passenger side, no lumbar support and it's manual but at least it has a seat height adjuster as well. So the interior has been upgraded somewhat. It's got this sort of Honda style selector, park is here, reverse, neutral drive, and then there's your one pedal driving, which I use pretty much all the time, parking brake, and then a little thing for your key. Up front, you've got a button that provides sport. <laughs> Not really that sporty, traction control off, and then that's your lane departure warning. Has a really nice um, phone uh, charger as well, which is kind of nice. Comes with Apple Play and Android Auto, and my, my phone will charge with the cover on as well, which is great. Chevy's infotainment system actually is one of the best. I really do like it. It's fast, it's quick. Um, it doesn't take long to load up the different features. You've got a physical button here to go home. Uh, obviously, volume control as well. And then you can go in and you can, well, you can go into settings here and you can change a bunch of stuff on the car, including, you know, Wi-Fi networks, stuff for vehicle, comfort and convenience. Um, you can turn off things like uh, the cooled and uh, heated seats coming on automatically, which is annoying, especially when you don't want them. Also got physical HVAC down here. All of your AC controls are pretty easy to find. I like it. I like the way it's organized. Uh, there's some apps in here as well. Um, climate apps, navigation, Sirius XM, all included. Uh, really, really nice. And then you can swipe uh, to see a second page here. They can go into climate controls if you want. It's got Alexa, my Chevrolet. Uh, it's got a camera, nice camera system. I have it set for the overhead one. That's kind of cool. Uh, looking at the front, um, you can get some side views. You can get a front view um, and then a top view as well if you want to go ahead and do that. So there's a lot of different views that you can use. But yeah, it really is super easy to use and fast to the touch. So the steering wheel has got a bunch of controls. Uh, as you can see, I have it on, uh, I got lane departure warning on, or the lane departure system on because I use Super Cruise now and then. Uh, and then on the right hand side, it shows you how much power you're using. We're currently using the AC, so it has a little bit. A uh, little foot symbol right here is the fact that I have one pedal driving on and then ready means the car is ready to go. Uh, it'll do a minimum of 127 if you've got a lead foot average 155, max 185. We've got a little over half of the battery charged right now. So if you press the button to the right of the steering wheel, you can scroll through different functions, information, your tunes, navigation, phone, various other things. You can also go into settings as well and make some changes right there. Push it once and off you go. So on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you've got your adaptive cruise control and super cruise buttons and controls. This one right here will control how far you are away from the car in front. So when you press it, 
you get a gap adjustment. I have it set to near, which is actually definitely far enough away for anybody. Far is way too far. So if somebody pulls ahead of you, like 200 meters ahead of you, the car slows down. It's kind of annoying. Uh, medium, and then so I have it set to near, which is more normal for the majority of drivers. So once you hit your speed, just hit set, and then you would press this one to set your adaptive cruise control system on. On the top of the steering wheel, is this light bar and that light bar will glow green once you have set your vehicle in the middle of the lane. It changes color as you drive. If you don't look at straight ahead, this is a sensor here that's looking to see where your head position is. Now you can look left and right. It's not tracking your eyes, but it's definitely tracking your head. So if you look down a little bit for a second, that's fine. But if you look too long, then the green light on the bar here will flash. If you ignore that, it'll eventually bring the vehicle to a halt, which is not really what you want to do on a freeway. All right, so only one thing left to do now, and that is to take this Bolt EUV for a drive and test out that Super Cruise system. Obviously, it's very quiet. It's got Michelin, uh, I think they're Primacy Eco tires on it, so they're pretty quiet too. I'll take anything that's Michelin over anything that's Bridgestone, so happy with the happy with these tires, they're fine. But I think if I owned it, I might just sacrifice a little bit of range by uh, putting some slightly more aggressive tires on it, just to fill the wheel wells out a little bit. All right, so I tried sport mode, and you know, let's put it in sport mode, and you know, the whole front rises up because of the torque. 260 foot pounds is quite a lot. And uh, yeah, it feels a little more aggressive, a little sportier in this particular mode. You get the little checkered flag on the screen there. So we're gonna head out a couple of these surface streets. Nothing crazy. This is pointless taking this car out onto a uh, you know, twisty two lane highway. It's not a sports car, but it is very nice to drive, very smooth very composed over rough pavement. Steering feels equally nice, apart from when you get massive torque steer. Um, it, it feels generally well behaved. So we're gonna head out to the freeway so we can check this uh, Super Cruise out. But we'll drive a little bit around these urban streets first. Show you how this thing does. But it's definitely plenty of power. Like I said, I wish it was rear wheel drive because then the power would get fed. Just it wouldn't have that torque steer and I think it would steer better and it would handle better. It does roll a little bit in the turns as you'd expect. Its, it's suspension is set for comfort despite the fact that we're on sport mode. And yeah, get up to about 20 miles an hour, put your foot down. It actually feels quicker than the numbers suggest. I mean, 6.8 seconds to 60, that's okay, it's under seven seconds, but it actually feels quicker real world than, uh, than the numbers are. So, you know, it's got that for it. It doesn't feel particularly fast, but when you look at the speedo, it's pretty easy to get up to you know, 70 miles an hour. It is capped at 92 maximum speed, not that you'd wanna go any faster in it. Uh, tires and, and obviously protecting the battery is probably the two key elements of that. It's not a sports car, let's not forget. And then I've been running the AC, I've been running the heated seats. The heated seats are unbelievably hot. My wife loves them. Okay, so we are gonna get on the freeway test out this super cruise system so I'll just I'll just get up to like 70 and then I'll set it all right well it went 69 but never mind so now we can take our foot off and now we're using the adaptive cruise control so now what we do is we press the steering wheel button and it goes green so now this green light here means super cruise is now active but then it's asking me to take control of the vehicle because it ain't happy for whatever reason and now we'll turn it back on again Sometimes it gets a little phased with, uh, you know, you gotta make sure that you're exactly in the center of the lane. I'm gonna set my speed limit slightly higher. 
So you can't set the super cruise until you get the steering wheel icon in the middle of the dash. And then it, it, it lets you put it on. So now it's let me put it on again. Let's see if it turns itself off again. No, look, it's behaving itself. So now, and it's speeding up now because that car's moved out of the way. So we're up to the 71 mile an hour limit that we've chosen. We've got cars on our left passing. There's a lot of cars here. I want to test it where there's a lot of traffic to see how well it works. And then I'm going to do a, a lane change maneuver and I'll show you what it does at that point. So we've got to watch out for cars that have merged over. It's a little disconcerting at first. Um, especially when there's a lot of traffic around. It's not ideal. So now it's putting the brakes on because this Mercedes pulled in front of us. So we're just going to sit behind this one until it moves out of the way. But yeah, it's essentially steering for us. As long as we keep looking straight ahead, it's going to do the driving for us. There's a few bumps here as well, but you can see that it doesn't like them. Um, you know, the system's not perfect. It feels like it gets confused and it thinks it's going to get taken out of the lane and then you've got two different freeways here. So hopefully we can, um, hopefully we can get it back on again. All right, let's test lane change. So we simply put on the uh, turn signal. Actually, this car's come in front of us, so the car's going to slow down a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull into this lane here. That flash is blue. And then it picks back up again. Once it's green, Super Cruise picks back up again and returns you to the speed limit that you're at, which is 72. Uh, occasionally it'll get angry and it'll tell you to hold the wheel. Flash red. If you look away for too long, it flashes red. And then uh, it does get a little bit upset by, by bumps. This is fairly fairly sharp um, freeway turn but it copes really well so we're gonna merge onto a separate freeway here so what we want to do here is turn signals on blue again find our lane and then it super cruises pick back up again it does occasionally get confused by off ramps and different paint on the road i'm, I'm assuming it's, it's tracking paint so now we're back up to 72 it's slowing down there's a merge here so it should it should start putting brakes on to maintain that and this is the closest distance that i have it set for because all the others are too far away and this guy's going to pull in front of me so it's going to put its brakes on and it asked me to grab hold of the wheel which it keeps doing because it doesn't understand what it's doing sometimes. So yeah, it's not flawless and I certainly prefer to drive myself. I think it's a lot better if you go on a longer journey, but the problem is with a longer journey in this car is it doesn't, um, it doesn't charge that fast. All right, so what do we think? Well, it's a fun and zippy little car to drive around town in. It's got tons of torque. Instant torque is always fun. It does spin its wheels. I wish it were a rear wheel drive platform, but it isn't. The downsides are it is only really a commuter car. If you go long distance on this, you're going to be sat charging for an hour and a half every time to go from 10 to 90%. It's a slightly quicker charge from 10 to 80%, but even when I plugged it into my home charger, it took an age to charge. But I do like this car. It's backed by Chevy. They've been building battery electric cars for some time now, including the original EV1 back in the day. So they've kind of got it down, but the competition right now is very good from Hyundai, Kia, VW, etc. that you might want to think twice before you get this one for those long distance trips. All right. Once again, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Like, subscribe. We'll catch you next time with another video.